Good morning, everyone. We're going to do a quick early morning video today, message, whatever you want to call it. So I want to reply to another comment. Um, having a great time with these. So bro, what about the others? Or can I say our family manifestations? Views or mindset about us? Don't they interfere with our manifestations? All right, so, so clearly this person is asking about how others affect us or you know maybe vice versa as well so we've already talked a little bit about the fact that you can manifest for other people and i want you to remember that we are not interfering with free will at all okay get very used to this idea it is not wrong it's not immoral i don't want you to feel guilty about uh like trying to change anyone else's mind or changing their world the reason you shouldn't feel guilty is because you're only changing your view of their world. So there are infinite possibilities and thus infinite universes. To that end, whenever we talk about past lives, I want you to reprogram yourself a little bit and don't think of them so much as past lives as more parallel lives because everything is happening at once. Remember, everything, every place, every time, every event is a single point. And that is how we're able to manifest instantly when we're able to do it. The only thing that gives the illusion of time is our belief in time, <laughs> right? So we have collectively agreed, the reminder that this whole thing that we're living in, the physical illusion is our creation and we keep feeding into it in real time. So we exist in the, in the present moment where we make all the choices. The future is created by our desires and the past is created by our, by our, by our, sorry, by our memories. But here's the fun part. The memories aren't real. We already know this, like physically, scientifically, that something insane, like 80% of our memories or something are, are fallible, right? They're not accurate. So we know what took place and we fill in the gaps because like, oh, it must have been that. Now, kick this into overdrive. So where we are right now, the choice we've, we've made, the, 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 the choice in how we're living, feeling, believing right now, creates a reasonable set of memories to explain it. And so we have this weird feedback loop where the memories we've created to explain the present feeds into the future, which feeds into the past, which feeds into the future, feeds into the past, right? So we have to like sequence break and go, new choice. This is where we are right now. And this is, this is part of why it feels so difficult to, to change your reality. Okay, so there's, there's infinite number of, of possibilities and branching paths, let's say. So by manifesting something for someone or manifesting someone in a specific way, you want them to show up in your life in a specific way, you're just creating a new version of them equal to every other version. So you're not actually changing them, they're really changing yourself because we are all connected, we are all one. So as much as there are other people or there appear to be other people, just like Ra says, they're really other selves. This is such a mind-bendingly complex system that we can't conceive, like we can't conceive of it with our mortal minds. All right? It's all worked out for us. The back end, like it's, imagine a computer simulation so sophisticated that any change we make, we don't have to worry about how it's going to happen. The simulation works it out for us. Okay, so we've got this situation where I want this person to show up in my life in this specific way, but they also exist as their own part of the source and have their own desires and will. So the simulation in the back end is going to figure out all the, all the numbers and zeros and ones and the morality of it to preserve free will. And it's going to cook it up for us and we don't have to worry about it at all. Okay. So let's get that out of the way first. We're not hurting anyone by appearing to change 
how they behave, we're really only changing ourselves because everything is us, you, pushed out. Okay, and then to that end, well, we've just answered your question, haven't we? It works in the opposite too. So your family members, really anyone you come across, they cannot affect you, right? So what I see, what's really, really common, uh, and actually grew up with this as well, uh, and got it from from family members and friends of family and whatnot, is like the, the, the love and light, light worker community saying like, oh, you know, got to protect against negative energies. No, you don't. Because negative energies don't exist unless you let them. All right. So trust me, I know when it comes to family in particular, family, they, they, they know our weaknesses and they know right where to push, they know right where to prod to, to get a rise out of us, to trigger us, if you will. All right. So no, it's, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> but ultimately, we're letting them. Okay. So it's kind of, I feel like personally, the way you react to and deal with family, deal with those closest to you is a really great benchmark for how you're doing uh, spiritually, mentally, right? So if you can get to the point where you can be patient and deliberate with your family, you're doing great. <laughs> Okay, so this whole thing of, um, of, of being influenced by anyone or, or being influenced by negative energies or even like external forces like extraterrestrials, angels, demons, whatever, like we could go into all that stuff, but we don't need to, right? Trust me, I believe in some weird shit. <laughs> and like if I, if I went in on the specifics of stuff, this would become like a whole new channel. And you might have a completely different opinion of me, but ultimately it doesn't matter because the only meaning anything has is the meaning you give it. The only power anything has is the power you give it. Like we haven't talked about money a million times. The only reason money has any power, has any value is because we've given it value. And the same is true for every single thing in our reality because everything exists in one single point and nothing is any more or less value than anything else. More or less valuable than anything else, sorry. So let me go back to the question real quick. Views or mindset about us. So the way people see us is actually the way we see us. So again, it's a really good test for like, if we think we've moved past something, maybe we haven't really moved past it until everyone sees us differently. Right? Let me give you an example. A few months ago, um, I was in, sorry, a few months ago, I was in a situation where there were a bunch of people calling me shy. Now, I don't see myself as shy. Like at all, I didn't think I was shy. I, I was referred to as shy when I was a young kid. And like, I understand why they have that opinion. Like it takes me a little while to warm up to people in a lot of cases, right? Unless it's a very specific situation and we're able to like open up straight off the bat. Um, I don't know if that means if I'm an introvert, because sometimes I really, I feel like an extrovert. So I don't know. doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> right. But people were calling me shy and it was bothering me a little bit. Cause I'm like, I'm not shy. Like, what are... there's maybe an indication that, that even though I wasn't consciously aware of the fact, maybe I am shy and then I still needed to like get over that. If that's something I wanted to get over and it was. All right. So maybe have a look at, at how your parents refer to you. <laughs> it's a good insight into maybe what, what's still lingering. Or maybe it's, it's, it's less about that and more about what you're projecting onto them. You know, because everyone is you pushed out. All right. If you do nothing else and just start seeing every single person in the world around you as a reflection of your inner world, your life can change if you commit to it fully, right? 
if, if, if nothing else, you will have more patience for people. You will have more love for people. And ultimately, like, that's what we're after, right? When we get right down to it, isn't that what we all want? We all want a, a place to belong. We want to feel accepted. We want to feel loved. And everything else is just a distraction. We convince ourselves that the, all these things, the car, the money, the job, the relationship will get us to that end goal. And in the process, we lose sight of the end goal. We got to talk about love at some point too, because it's so vitally important. Because it's what our reality is made of. But it's also kind of a difficult topic to, um, <laughs> to articulate, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We've got to talk about identity and we've got to talk about love. Big topics we've got to get up, get up in. Ah, all right. I'm going to leave it at that. As always, take what resonates and discard the rest. <laughs>